Hey guys, Rob Alton here, IMX Productions, 10 Minute Design, I'm going to do a fun tutorial today because as many of you know, uh, Marvel dropped the bomb about a week ago and announced all the movies they're going to be doing for the next like 10 years and it's really exciting. I thought I'd do something fun and do a uh, quick tutorial and show you how um, a fairly close approximation of how to do the uh, title poster for the new Avengers movie, Avengers Infinity War, so far. So here's what they released, this little teaser poster right here. Okay, so we're going to try to approximate this font, this kind of 3D um, design, as quickly as possible and as closely as possible. Uh, obviously, you could spend hours and hours on this and get it really right. Um, this is one technique that will get, get you to something fairly close. This is cool if you're going to make, make your own um, poster design for your own film, or if you want to make a kind of a fan poster, then this will work too. Okay, so we're going to start with a canvas, and of course we want our Avengers font on there. Uh, there will be a link in the description for where you can download this font. It's a little different than the font they use, but it's, it's this is probably from the first Avengers movie, but it's close enough, so we're gonna go with it. So you've got your font. First thing you wanna do is come up here to 3D, new 3D extrusion. Okay, you're gonna click yes, and that's gonna create a 3D design from that. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this light, I'm just gonna move it a bit to the side. Okay, make it the light coming from the side like that, perfect. Okay, down here I'm going to click on my Avengers 3D uh, object and the shape preset. There's a nice preset in here which kind of gives us that beveling that you see in the um, in the logo. It's that nice little outline bevel. Perfect. Okay, now we want to start texturing this thing. So we're going to click on, on the first layer here. You see it, uh, Photoshop separates all the different kind of faces. So that first one here, we're going to come up here to Diffuse New Texture. It's going to create a texture for us. We're then going to edit that texture, and it's going to open up a new file with that texture. What I've done is I've gotten these little metal uh, textures already good to go. You can get these on, make these yourself, or get these on uh, Google Images, no problem. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to copy and paste into here. It fits perfectly. Just hit Save, and you can close that. All right, perfect. Now we're going to go to the bevel. This is the outline. We're going to do the same thing. So new texture and edit texture. It opens up that little that thing. And this is the just the plain um, metal texture, so more of a silver. Okay, save and close. So already, look at that. We're looking pretty cool. So what we're gonna do now is we got the front, we got the other one. We just want to go through these other uh, sides. The back doesn't really matter too much, but we may as well do it. And we're just gonna pick that first texture. And so do that for the back. And now we've got all our textures. Okay, pretty happy. That's the base of our 3D. We're happy with that. So what we want to do is render. So you're going to come here to the corner and simply hit render. This is going to take a little while. It's going to render out that 3D image for us, which we can then go in Photoshop and edit and add lots of style to. So just sit, sit tight. It might take uh, five, 10 minutes. Go get a coffee and come right back. Okay, render's done. Let's continue. So first thing you want to do is uh, come up here to workspace and change back to your regular workspace because um, when you work in 3D, it changes the, it changes your panels and everything. So change back. Second thing you want to do is come here to your 3D layer. I've already done this, but you're going to rasterize 3D. So there's going to be rasterize 3D. Okay. And then we are left with this image here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it. So drop it down and I'm going to hit mult overlay and it's going to just darken those um, colors just a little bit. Hold down command or control and click that layer. It's going to select the layer. And then I want to put a curves adjustment layer, and I'm just going to drop it even more until we get those nice darker colors going that really look like the logo here. Okay, and every time you put an adjustment layer, I want to go just over the 3D. So always just kind of re-click with the command control, and it gives you that thing. Now, I want to make this just slightly more yellow, so I'm just going to move over just a little bit, like that. Perfect, okay. Now, a few other things we can do. If we look at our logo here, we've got a bit of an, look at our logo here, we have a bit of an out black outline around, so let's try to get that going. Now, the way we can do this is by getting another, now I could have saved the one I had at the beginning, could have uh, um, copied it, but we're gonna get another text layer here, and we just want to 
match as closely as possible. You might have to scale. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to multiplies. So it's gonna make the white disappear, but the layer is still there. Go to blending options, add an inner glow, and change it to multiply and change that color to black. Now that's gonna add it everywhere like that. Just to choke a little bit. Nice, now we're getting cool. If you want a more accurate uh, result, you can, uh, you can do each letter individually, but for the uh, purposes of this tutorial, we're looking good. So I'm gonna duplicate those layers once more. Once again, I'm gonna put it above everything. And from this one, I will change from overlay to color dodge. And it's gonna lighten everything, but I don't want it on all over the place. I'm gonna put a mask, gonna fill that black, gonna grab a brush, Make sure there's no hardness, fairly low brush, fairly low opacity, and I'm just going to kind of brush at the top here. As you can see in the Avengers logo, the tops are a bit, um, got a bit more light to them, so let's do that. All the way across the board. And this is a lot of just customizing. You do it the way you like it even add another one just to lighten everything up even more and it is looking pretty cool all right I could do the opposite so I could add another layer bring that all the way to the top go to multiply so it's gonna darken everything same idea we're going to put a mask Fill it black and then maybe paint the bottom so it darkens everything at the bottom here. And then copy that. Maybe lower the opacity, it's a bit strong. Looking good. Okay, next thing we do have to do, so our title's looking good. It's not an exact replica. Um, I mean, I could work for hours to try to match it perfectly, but it's looking pretty good for the purposes of the tutorial. What we want to do now is add those lens flares in. So what you need to do, um, I don't like the lens flares that come in Photoshop. Uh, they're really terrible. So the best thing to do, if you don't have another means of generating lens flares, to go to Google Images and just search up some lens flare images. I've got a few here. Here's a nice basic one. I've got a nice lens flare here. I'm just going to select it, copy, bring it into my design. It's a little small. I'm going to up it just a little bit like that. I'm going to switch that layer to add and I believe in the poster there's a nice flare right over here. So right on the tip of that little Avengers arrow like that. Put a mask on there. I just want to delete this the end here. Obviously that's the wrong color so we're going to come up here to image adjustments and hue and saturation and simply change the hue until we get that yellow orange we're looking for. Just like that. And then we can copy that over. We have another flare right on the S here. Make it slightly bigger. Right on the edge. Here. A little bit of variance on that one. Looking pretty cool. Lastly, we have a nice, uh, nice large flare in the background. So I've got this flare here. It's not going to be an identical um, flare to what we're looking at, but it's going to be pretty cool nonetheless. Just scale it up to the size of my canvas. Hit add. And of course, we need to change the coloring. That I think that's better. Now I'm going to put a mask on there. And then just, it was a bit strong, so I'm just going to slowly bring it in, just like that. And 
and there you go. Okay, next thing you could do, you could add the Infinity Wars. It would be basically the same process, and uh, you put that underneath, okay? So, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Like I said, it's not a perfect replica, but it's close enough to the techniques used in there, um, and then use those techniques and then modify it as you see fit to, to uh, arrive at, a, at an end product that you're comfortable with and you're happy with. Please click here and you can see another tutorial where I show you how to modify the Iron Patriot and turn him into the Canadian Patriot and an Apple Patriot, which is pretty cool. Um, and click here to see one of our short films, Zombie Jitsu, that we put together a few years ago with a lot of fun. Follow me on social media. Please let me know what you think of this tutorial. Comment below and uh, subscribe for more videos, guys. Thanks for watching. This is Rob Baldwin. Cheers.